Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So today's video is gonna be a part two of a Mac Mini M2 test that I did about a week ago with Final Cut Pro. This one's gonna be a little more intense. I'm gonna add some LUTs uh, or a LUT, uh, some color grading, maybe do a stabilization test, but really try to stress this Mac Mini M2 out. Now this is the base model, just FYI. So eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, eight gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of SSD storage. So let's see what we can do. So let's flip over. Now, one other thing that I'm doing, just I forgot to mention is screen recording. So instead of having the camera back here and filming the actual monitor, I'm gonna screen record it because it's gonna stress it out a little bit more with an extra task in the background. So just wanted to point that out as well. So let's get to Final Cut Pro. So as you can see here, I got a video some music, uh, my subscribe button thingy, and my outro that I have here. So for a new project, I'm just gonna title it FCP Test 1, 4K, Apple ProRes 422 LT, that's what I'm gonna leave it on. And let's drag the clip in. So test one is gonna be actually just being able to scrub through. So as you can see here, scrubbing through just fine. And just to show you, we are in better quality. So scrubs perfectly, no issues at all there. Step two, playing it. Is that a problem? Get a little bit easier access. We really like this here. So as you can see, I can stop it, play it. It works just fine. So no issues there either in better quality. If it was in better performance, it would be even better but it does downgrade the resolution for your preview. So if you are someone that does have a 4K monitor and you did shoot in 4K, it's worth playing it back in better quality to get that exact look of knowing what your footage is gonna look like. But like I said, better performance is fine if you are just using that to edit so that way you're not getting the beach ball effect and all those other things going through here. So once again, no problems at all, so perfect. Now let's go ahead and throw in some music here. So I'm just gonna toss in a bunch. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can just see the whole thing here. And I'm gonna trim it so it's that. Now let's just make it quieter so it's not like super loud in our background. So now, you can hear the music in the background. You can see that it's playing smooth in better quality. Just to let you know, it, it's odds. You can put your phone in. You can fit in it. So no issues. As you can see, once again, works flawlessly there. Now let's go ahead and start making it not work flawlessly with this basic 3D text. So this 3D text right here, guys, is gonna stutter like no other watch. The flip side of it has these really, really grippy parts here that will help from So as you can see there, down. it stutters. And this is what it did in my first test with the basic 3D text here. It stutters like crazy and better quality, but if I switch over to better performance and push play. The flip side of it has these really, really grippy parts here. That it works just fun. fine. So better performance with the basic 3D text is fine. Better quality is gonna stutter. Now once it renders and you go back into better quality, and then if you see here, um, once I start to play, really grippy parts here. well, it's already rendered, so of course it's gonna do that. Really now in better quality, it's working. So the point is, is it needs to do its thing first and then it will play back just fine. But since I know this one really stresses it out, I'm just gonna throw these all over the place. I normally wouldn't have this much as far as like 3D text going on in a video, but the point is of this video is what can I do to stress out this Mac Mini M2? And then is that going to affect any um, export times, things like that. So let's just toss these in. So I think we're good there. So seems like we have kind of an even distribution throughout the whole entire video here. I think on the promo it shows like on their website. So as you can see, it's freezing up on us. 
So, which is to be expected. I go to better performance. It doesn't. So as you can see here, better performance is going to be your friend if you're doing like 3D text and stuff like that. Other transition type things, that's gonna also affect it. All right, so now let's go ahead and add that LUD in before I actually start cutting it up and putting some transitions in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the whole clip here, go into here, it's under the eye info type button. And then I'm just gonna add a leaming LUT. Now I didn't shoot it in HLG3, it's just a standard picture profile with my ZVE10, but it's a LUT, we'll add it. Now, as you can see, it's changed the color a little bit on here. It's still playing just fine under better performance. If I go to better quality, it's playing just fine as well. It's really stuttering there with that 3D text again, but that's to be expected. But I'm gonna go ahead and actually switch back to better performance just for the sake of this test here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go in and add a color wheel. So it's gonna be for the whole video here. So even though it really isn't gonna help us since I didn't shoot in a flat profile, I'm gonna open up the video scope and just kind of play around with some stuff here. I mean, honestly, it's not really gonna help us that much with me playing with these because it's not a flat profile. I mean, it just, it's going to kind of look like garbage. But if I just play around with these a little bit, at least now there's a color wheel added. So we have a color wheel and a LUT. So now let's go ahead and go back in here. I'm going to turn off the video scope. I'm going to close this out so we have a bigger picture. And let's see in better performance. It's playing back just fine. So no issues. If I go in and go to better quality, it seems to be working other than obviously once I get to the basic 3D text, it, that's when it freezes up on us. So better performance is your friend if you're gonna be doing all these because it's smoother playback, better quality is gonna give you a better picture, but it is gonna freeze up until it renders, which I don't wanna waste my time with all that. Uh, I would rather just stick with better performance. So now let's use my blade trimmer here and I'm going to throw in some transitions here. So I'm just gonna do some random ones. I don't wanna go crazy. So let's go in here, got our transitions here and I'm just gonna drag them over. So I'm just gonna pick some random ones. I know slide tends to really stress it out for some reason. So I'm gonna do that one maybe twice just to see how it reacts. We'll do push, we'll do puzzle. Maybe I'll add one more in here. Why not? Let's do a curtain, why not? So now let's play. Now we are in better quality, mind you. So let's go. It's, it's simple looks good it matches all right so that one worked well it does have its shortcomings mainly that one definitely froze up on us yes those grippy things do help it's trying to catch up here and it will eventually as you can see there it did hardly any force maximum if you only did maybe like one card you could hold some money that one froze up on us a little bit technically might be able to squeeze like a bill or two and this is really meant material so that slide one really messed up a little bit on us too. Slide again. That one actually went smooth. This one's going to really throw us off because it's basic 3D and then a transition. And then we'll do the same here. Okay. So with those transitions, they work pretty well. Once again, it is in better quality. So let's switch it to better performance. And as you can see here, they're working just fine in better performance. So once again, maybe you do better performance for your editing. Now it's not gonna affect your export at all, but once again, it's just an idea. And it still looks okay in better performance. It does downgrade the resolution, so it's a smoother playback. 
It's almost like if you have a crappy internet reception and you're watching YouTube on your phone, instead of it being like on 1080 or you know 1440 or 2160 resolution, having it set to like 720 or 480, it's going to play back just fine. It's just going to look a little crappier. So that's kind of the idea with this as well. So just something to think about. So now that we have all these on here now, let's go ahead and export it and let's see what we get with this. So this is a five minute and 40 second clip. Um, let's go into settings. So the formats computer video codecs is H.264 faster encode, resolutions 4K, save only. 2.14 gigs is the file size and it's gonna save as a .mp4. So click next here. This is what I'm gonna save it under. So I'm gonna get my phone here and let's go. And let's go over here and let's look at the sharing. That's the export portion. Once it hits a certain time, like at 1%, 2%, that's gonna show us when it starts to really go. It's at 1% right now and we're at about 15 seconds or so. So 2% now. So let's just get the show on the road. Let's jump forward to 100% and let's see where we're at. All right, so guys, we are at 100% and this is very interesting because with this video only being five minutes and 40 seconds, it took 10 minutes and 49 seconds to actually export with the faster encode. And if you remember with my previous part one video, a video this size, as far as length goes, uh, if it didn't have the LUT and all these other things added, it would have only probably taken about two and a half minutes. So that's a huge, huge difference where it actually took almost double the length of the actual time of the video to actually export. So very unusual, um, but that just shows you right there that the Mac Mini M2 can do it. It just is going to take a little while, which it's still fast. I mean, if you would have said, hey, can you export this 4K video with all these things uh, like five years ago and said it's gonna be done in 10 minutes, everyone would've been like, cool, that's cool with me. So the point is, is that it works, but it's just not great. So one thing that I wanna do real quick is actually do another export test. But this time what I'm gonna do is faster encode once again, but I'm gonna change the resolution to 1080. So one, as you can see here, is it changes the file size significantly to 861.7 megabytes uh, instead of uh, a gigabyte file of two or so it was. It's still .mp4. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna say this is an HD test. Just save it to the desktop and three, two, one. With this one, let's go ahead and see how fast it does. I have to think if it's going to do anything, it's probably maybe gonna be half the speed um, of what it was doing the 4K because if I'm um, exporting it in a um, lower resolution, it's still gonna be a really good looking video for YouTube and stuff like that, but it's taking my 4K footage and then taking it down to 1080. Uh, perfect example right now we're at 6% and we're at 30 seconds so a little bit quicker um, but let's jump to 100% and let's see where we left off at. All right guys so I'm back and it just finished so we are sitting at 8 minutes and 28 seconds for the resolution at 1080 so a little surprising I thought it would be quite a bit faster than that to be honest with you but that just shows you once again the stress that a LUT and color grading and some other things can do with screen recording on as well. It really does take a toll on the actual export time as well because this same video, if I didn't add all this stuff and it was just a normal 4K video with maybe a couple of text um, and no LUTs or anything like that, just a standard picture profile, my ZVE-10, um, if I did 1080, it would have probably done this in like a minute. So. Like I said, if you're not gonna be adding LUTs, then you're completely fine. If you start to color grade and you're starting to really dive deep into trying to, to really make your footage look cinematic, then it can do it. Just be ready to have a little bit longer export times and stuff like that. So I hope this helps you out, guys. So my recommendation would be is if you're needing to do all these extras, 
Uh, you definitely need to get 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I don't know how much that's going to help you. You probably will need to upgrade to the um, M2 Pro Mac Mini. Uh, obviously, you jump up significantly in price from $599 to, you know, the base being around $1,300, so $600 to $13. So you're spending double the money, um, but you're getting a more capable computer that's going to be able to handle anything you throw at it a lot better. Um, because, for example, I have my M1 Max right here. And I know this can just chew through all these little tests that I'm doing, but this is a $600 computer and this was at the time of sell 3000 or so dollars. So quite a big difference, even though I got that used. Um, but yeah, so hit the like button if you liked the video. If you loved it, please subscribe, ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. If you got any value out of this, make sure to comment down below. So be safe, God bless. I'll see you on the next one.